Welcome to the new Honda Trans Alp. Now this is a bike I've been really excited about riding and these have really just started to hit the dealers in the UK now. This is based on the new Honda Hornet, so that's 750cc parallel twin, you know, 270 degree cranked motor, 90 horsepower, big dollops of torque, really really impressive engine this. Basically the same frame and swinging arm and then with 20 inch front wheel, beefed up suspension and just a bigger motorcycle. I mean this is a big bike for a middleweight adventure bike. This has got a bit of size to it. I mean it's, it's as tall as me almost. This bike weighs 208 kilos wet. It's got a 17 litre fuel tank. We'll go through all the full specs of this in a minute, but I'm really excited about riding this bike because this bike only costs nine and a half thousand pounds, which seems like really good value to me when you've got this punchy little 90 horsepower engine. So, but it all depends on how it rides, doesn't it? Last week I was testing the new Suzuki 800DE, which I loved. Link to that video at the top, but now it's time to give the Trans Alp a bit of a whirl. We're going to be doing a little bit of light off road on this, like we did on the DE, just to sort of bit compare their off road abilities. But this isn't going to be a comparison video, I've got a separate back to back comparison with Greg coming, so I'm going to try and avoid mentioning any similarities in this video to the DE because that's going to be its own a video all on its own. So make yourself comfortable, sit back, relax and chop C, roll the intro. Honda very kindly given me one with some extras on so I've got the, the optional tank bag this bike also has the quick shifter and blipper which is extra this touring screen is the taller optional screen which is extra it's also got the 12 volt power socket which again is extra and it's got the I've actually got the top box at home but because I'm going off road I thought I'd go without the top box in this video but it's also got the top box so I think all in all with the top box this bike's got about 1500 quids worth of accessories on it um, it's not got the bars or the skid plate but you know it's got the other sort of touring accessories so uh, let's jump on firing her up you've got that lovely little uh, TFT exactly the same as Hornet and it sounds very familiar, just like the Hornet, funnily enough. Right, let's get a bit of a... Let's get off this here. What we're going to do on this video is sort of stick to the, the sort of rougher stuff, the little back lanes like I did on the DE. You know, so it's a sort of similar sort of comparison. Adventuring, full adventuring. Morning. That's an impressive moustache. So riding position is extremely laid back. My feet are sort of forward. I sort of really do feel like I'm sat at the kitchen table, you know, really, really comfortable. Brakes are good <laughs> as we nearly end up on the front of that Corsa. But yeah, it's a really comfortable riding position. I just sort of feel quite low in the bike and it feels like a lot of bike in front of me, a bit like the Africa Twins, a bit like that, isn't it? I think they've gone for sort of a similar type of uh, sort of styling to the Africa Twin. There's a lot up front. With this screen on, it's sort of quite high, this screen. We will take it onto faster roads just so we can test out that optional screen because that isn't the standard screen. That's a taller one. And Honda do quite like to make their screens tall, don't they? You think of what the Africa Twins like, that's that, you're looking through that screen. And I'm even looking through that screen a little bit now. And I'm six foot blooming two. So the bike weighs 208 kilos fully fueled, which seems very, very light. Extremely light. To ride it, yeah, I guess it feels like, but because it's very big and tall, you sort of get the perception that it's going to be heavy, I guess. I mean, wheeling it around, it doesn't feel too bad at all. The bike's got the same tyres that the uh, Suzuki V-Strom DE comes with, which is the, the Dunlop Trail Max, I think they are. So they're like a, a road tyre, but sort of a heavily treaded road tyre. Now, there is a green line over there, but I don't fancy that one. <laughs> 65 of that screen. Yeah, I'm not getting any air at all on my body. 
I'm even not getting any noise on my peak either. I'm getting no buffeting on my peak. That's, that is a very, very comfortable screen at speed, that is. Yeah, I'm getting none of that sort of normal buffeting. There you go, put my head up a little bit more and I get all of that. I'm sat below the air and I'm six foot two. So that screen, I think, is very, very good for sort of a bit, a bit higher speed stuff. And I normally struggle with any sort of screen normally. It's horrible for me and I'm just looking over the top of the screen. I'm not looking through it, I'm looking over the top of it. Blipper. Yeah, Blipper's nice. The engine sounds beautiful. You know, it does sound great, this, uh, this parallel twin motor. <laughs> it really snarls when you pick the revs up. The ride is very smooth, sort of going over all potholes. It feels, you know, it's got a 21 inch front. It feels, it doesn't, it's not particularly fast steering, you know, it feels that sort of, it feels like it's got a 21. They've not worked any sort of magic on the geometry so you don't notice it's a 21. You can tell it's a 21 from the way it changes direction, but it's sort of gliding over the tarmac. You don't get any sort of feedback from the tarmac on the texture, you know. These adventure bikes, they're quite soft, so you sort of lose all that. They're built for doing miles and a little bit of off-road. Suspension on this at the front is 200 millimeters of travel up front, 190 millimeters on the rear. We brakes are good. Yeah, brakes are really nice actually. Right, we're gonna hit a little bit of off-road now. Let's get over this side, because I'm going to 360s on the opposite side to what I really want it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stand up because I can't look through that screen off-road. So if you want to do a bit of off-road, now that screen isn't really, it's, it's too, it's too tall. Standing up, sort of gripping the bottom of my legs is quite nice. The tank feels a little bit wide, it's sort of got, yeah, touching my knees a little bit, but I can get a decent purchase on it actually. So I can grip quite nicely. I'm in sport mode, so that's probably not ideal, is it? It does have a gravel mode, so let's stop and let's go to mode, standard, rain, gravel. So the gravel's got ABS off, maximum engine braking, one down on the traction, and half power so it should basically let a little bit of spinach a little bit of rear wheel spinach in that gravel mode yeah this actually feels not i mean this is why these bikes are great this is why these middleweight adventures are great because you know it's just gliding over these bumps it's not too heavy i'm rubbish off-road i don't proclaim to be any good off-road by the way let's just feel for that rear brake yeah, it's in a good position for me. Bars feel reasonable when I'm stood up at six foot two. I'm not gonna go too fast. This doesn't have knobblies on it. Just, as I say, it just has heavily treaded road rubber. Oh, watch for ruts, Chopsy. We don't wanna be stuck in a rut. <laughs> Let's go to the middle. Suspension's handling, actually. I did wonder whether 200 millimetres of travel would be enough. That's pretty bumpy back there, but... Yeah, it's handling it all right. <laughs> oh, there we go, chalky bit. Chalky loose stuff. Hard packs. He's sat down again. <sighs> Gonna lose my camera in a minute. Yeah, that's the gravel road, Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, the camera's really uh, taking a bit of a pounding. This is the black one, if you haven't worked that out. It comes in several colours. I, I prefer the look of that blue, red, white and blue one, got to be honest. Sort of the standard trans out colours, not so, not so keen on this darker colour. But yeah, it looks nice still. So walking around the beast, you know, you've got the normal switch gear, Honda switch gear. Let's turn that dash on, have another look, skis. Trans out. Yeah, exactly the same dash as on the Hornet. Really good layout, loads of information on there. Look how sweaty I am. There we go, we come out here. It's a nice old gaff, isn't it? Nice old gaff. Oh, that's nice and all, that. that'll do. No doggy, it's a three legged dog. Yeah, that screen, if you're going to be doing this sort of riding, that screen's a little bit too high. 
a little bit too high. I'm having to sort of look over it a bit, especially on the uphill stuff. This bike also has the quick shifter blipper, which is an extra again. Hand guards are also extra on this. It doesn't come with hand guards. So I think Honda have pulled a little bit of a sneaky. You know, they've not included a lot of stuff which is included on some of the competition, the standard, you know. So they've come in with a £9,500 bike, which, don't get me wrong, is an incredible price. A fantastic price for a machine, you know, like this. But they haven't included sump guards, hand guards, quick shifter blipper, uh, 12 volt charger. You know, none of that is on the bike. I love the sound of the engine. I love that grunt. Sounds very much like the Africa Twin, doesn't it? And this is like a mini Africa Twin. You can tell by the styling and everything, you know. It's it's basically a mini Africa Twin. When you open it up, it takes a little while to sort of get going. I mean, this engine is 90 horsepower, so it's got a, a, a massive top end, but it's not the torquiest it's not as torquey as some of the competition and on a heavier bike you know when you open the throttle in top gear i mean it, it takes a little that's not top fifth gear it takes a little bit of winding up but it does have the power at the top but it's plenty and it is plenty enough there's plenty there if you want to get a bit of a wriggle on it can do it Listen to that engine when you start to really load it. That's loud, isn't it? That's a lot of airbox roar coming through there. Oh. Yeah, that's quick, that is. That is fast. That is fast. When you open it up, my God, that's fast. It tries to lift the front wheel and everything. Let's do that again. Hang on, wait for this car and we'll, we'll do that again. That, that surprised me how punchy it is. That's fast. That is not a slow motorcycle by any stretch of imagination. That's got some go. You don't need any more than that for your adventuring. That is plenty of power there. Yeah, those front brakes are nice. There's, a, you know, enough enough bite there. Yeah, there's, it's, it, it doesn't dive. It does dive because it's an adventure bike, but it's not ridiculous. You know, it doesn't feel completely squishy and loads of weight transfer. I think they've got quite a good blend of sort of off-road, on-road performance. I think it's perhaps a little bit more on-road focused because let's, let's be honest, that's where you're going to spend 90, maybe 95% of your time. Maybe 100% of your time for some people. So it is road focused, I think. Maybe more so than what the V-Strom is. Just saying, we're not going to compare it too much to the V-Strom. The suspension actually is non-adjustable by the look of it. So the suspension is not adjustable on this bike. Not the forks anyway, there's no adjusters on the top of the forks. I'll have to have a look in the shock in a minute, but there's non-adjustable suspension. So that's quite interesting when you consider the DE has a just fully adjustable suspension. So mm, that sort of lets you realise which one's more off-road focused, doesn't it? Oh, I have to start up to get some air. Oh, so hot behind that screen. Oh, it's better. Oh, geez, it's hot. This is what I love about adventure bikes. You know, the fact you can you can just stand up on them. You know, if you're going to be in the saddle all day, it's nice just to be able to stand up and sort of take the weight off your bum for a little bit, stretch your legs, get out of the, get out of the wind protection on hot days, cool yourself down. But it's got a good, you know, good feel, a good bit of grip between my legs, quite thin here. It's a tall bike. It is quite a tall bike. I'm sure Honda will probably do different seat heights and all of that, but it's a tall machine. I can flat foot it easily, but I am six foot two. So if you're a little bit shorter, I don't know, you need to try one. 
need to try one, see if you can flat foot it or not. But yeah, it's, it's nice to stand up on, very comfortable. There's no cruise control and I don't think it's an option either. Probably heated grips is an option. Um, I know it's not easy to put them on, on the Honda. There's not a button, it's normally inside of the menu somewhere. Throttle response is very nice. Remember on the Hornet, a lot of people complained that it was snatchy. It wasn't snatchy. It was quite an aggressive throttle, you know, it needed a bit of finessing, but it wasn't snatchy, it was fueled perfectly. Because this is a bit bigger, and th there's none of that, it's even in the sport mode, the throttle response is a lot softer. Now, it could be it's because it's been retuned slightly, or it could be because it's a bigger, heavier bike, you know, it's not sort of lunging like it did on the Hornet, because it's heavier. I don't know. There's probably been a bit of retuning on this motor, maybe, for the trans out. I'll be very surprised if it's just like for like of what's in the Hornet. But don't worry, there's none of that aggressiveness to the throttle. You know, if you didn't like I like that, but I probably wouldn't like that on an adventure bike. But yeah, it's it's you can feel the throttles there, but you know it doesn't doesn't it's a little bit lurchy on the Hornet, there's none of that. <laughs> Front's up. It's quite a lively bike. I like that. It's got some punch. <laughs> Considering it's a night got 90 horsepower and it's it's a massive machine. Yeah, it's surprisingly punchy and fun. It's still got that fun feel that the Hornet was a really fun bike. I don't think it's lost too much of that. It's lost a bit of that of course. But it's not lost. I'm just looking where we can turn off and have some fun. It's yeah, it's still got that fun factor. It still can surprise you and lift the wheel on occasion and stuff like that. I like that. Let's try not to kill the baby. Or knock the baby out with a selfie stick. Oh, we better not. We better not. We won't be allowed. Yeah, when you're sort of manoeuvring it around like that, you can sort of feel that weight, you know, that, that top, that heavy weight at the top. Not heavy, but you know, it definitely has a little bit of a top heavy feel to it. Now, considering it's 208 kilos, it's not a heavy, it's not a heavy adventure bike, but it's quite tall, so you've got that weight quite high. So you can notice a little bit of weight with a very slow maneuvering like that, really slowly. Don't get me wrong, it's no GS or 1200 Rally Tiger. <laughs> but you can, you can notice it a little bit. Doing this sort of riding makes me realise I live in a, a very beautiful part of the country. I mean, look at this. Look at the views around here, look. look. Wow. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's no... Oh, that's knocked it down again. <laughs> that's up again. And there's the, the reason I love these little lanes, when I ride these roads all the time on my uh, 690, there's no one about. There's no one about on these roads, you know. It's it's ten past five in the afternoon. It's quarter past five. It's rush hour. You'll get the odd car on these roads. If you go on the main roads, you'll be stuck in traffic. You can't ride it for pleasure this time of day. You know, you want a bike, you can come out and exploit these little back roads. There's no average speed cameras on these roads. There's no police on these roads. You know, you need a bike. This is the future of motorcycling, really. With all these average speed cameras going up, limiting, you know, speed everywhere. This is the future of motorcycling, riding around on the country's back lanes like that. Now, as I said at the beginning, if you are interested in one of these new middleweight adventure bikes, there will be a video very soon comparing this Trans Alp with the Suzuki 800DE. Very similar bikes, very similar price, very similar engines, you know, they're really direct competitors, just as the GSX 8S is and the Hornet. <laughs> these are the same bikes, but in adventure trim. So me and Greg will bring you a video, a comparison video on these two machines coming very, very soon. So to make sure you don't miss it, don't forget, subscribe below and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. And in this episode, we're going to be comparing the two new middleweight adventure bikes on the block. The new kids on the block. Gravel, got it.
the DE is actually very nice to stand up on. <laughs> you can't put this on the channel, I think that's really <laughs> terrible. This is and what you do right. though, but that's this is right. <laughs> <laughs> it, actually, the Honda, really, it, you know, it's pretty bumpy this year, it probably doesn't pick it up on camera. And it actually is doing a nice job of it. I'm not doing a nice job of it, the bike's absolutely loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate these little ruts, I hate them. Oh, the, ru the ruts are the, the thing, aren't they? The I ruts hate are the them. thing. Stuck. I actually think the Suzuki's a little easier. Christ, it's narrow for it. <laughs> I'm pleased I've got this big screen now, it's keeping all the bugs out of the place. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> I haven't got any handguards on this, so I've got to be careful I don't get the oh, front brake pulled. Take the varnish off. <laughs> this is what it's all about, these little adventure bikes. Is your traction control malfunctioning there, Greg? <laughs> Gives it sort of a bit of a... Wow, the wheel comes out quite full. Oh, let's try second, that's quite mad. You need to do that to go over the logs and stuff. There's a massive log, I had no choice. It's all just part of off-road riding. There's a massive log in your pants now after the <laughs> off-road is. <laughs> You're stuttering away, trying to save me from myself. Gravel mode again. Wee -ha! Let's just hit the motorway briefly, just to test things like... Uh, wind protection. We've done it all in this test, haven't we? Doing the whole shebang. I'm not at 45 yet. So, in three, two, one, go! Look at the power of Suzuki! Look around! 